You live your life, you get used to the routine, you wake up in the morning, you get the kids ready, you take them to daycare, you go off to work, you make your money, you pay your bills, you take care of your children, and then war breaks out and you quickly understand how dependent you are on that routine. So today I wanna to tell you a story about a daycare in Israel that couldn't function because they didn't have proper shelters for the children and how that affected a whole community. Since this war started, the city where I live, which is halfway between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, we only had a few sirens throughout the whole war and one just rang out yesterday. Our other neighbors, the Houthis, they shot a big rocket that traveled over 2,000 kilometers. Usually these kinds of rockets get intercepted before they come into Israeli airspace, but this one was shot down right over the city where I live, and a big piece of it fell through the... Actually, I haven't seen this piece. I don't know how big it is, but apparently it was big enough to go through the roof of a local train station and hit the escalator. This was around 6.30 in the morning. Nobody was there, nobody was hurt, praise God. But that is the most action that my city has seen throughout this war, even though it's really close, about 25 miles to Jerusalem or Tel Aviv. We can actually hear all the rockets being shot down and the impacts in the nearby cities. There's a neighboring city, a pretty big one. It's only about 15 miles away from uh, where I live. And we can hear they got a bunch of rockets shot at them in the beginning of the war. And this was unprecedented because this is the center of the country. And in years past, Gaza rockets wouldn't make it that far. But not in this war. All of a sudden, they started getting all these rocket impacts and sirens through the night. And a lot of these people don't have bomb shelters in their house again because these apartment buildings were built years back when Gaza rockets were not an issue for the center of the country and all of a sudden they became a big issue. There are some community shelters. They can fit a number of people in there, maybe up to 40, 50 people, um, but they haven't been used in many years, and a lot of these are pretty run down. People would use them as storage, or they would just be abandoned for years, and all of a sudden these families run in there to use them, and it's moldy, and it's dirty, and there's probably rats in there and stuff. So not a great experience. Also, public spaces don't have bomb shelters, like daycares, for example. A lot of these are community daycares. They're right in the middle of a neighborhood. It's just a house with a big garden and there's a bunch of kids in there. So the war starts and there's rockets flying over the city and Home Front Command says, everybody stay in. You cannot have a bunch of children together at this daycare unless you have protection unless there's a, a bomb shelter. So now you have a situation, there's 100 kids that go to this community. That's 100 families that need to stay home and take care of their kids and not go out to work, which you can probably do for a few days, but you can't stay home with your child all the time and you can't take them to work every day of the week. You could take the child to stay with grandma during the day, but she doesn't have a bomb shelter either and she's just not fast enough to run into the stairwell with a child in her arms whenever there's rockets coming in. So basically the whole community is affected. Parents cannot go to work. They have to take care of their children, but they can't because money runs out pretty quickly if you don't work. Plus the question is, will they be able to keep this job if they don't go back to work? Then there's the daycare itself. There's at least 10 people that are out of work because unless the kids come back, they don't have anything to do there. The lady that runs this daycare, she's trying to keep her employees. She's trying to find alternatives for where to put up the kids and how to give the families an opportunity to leave their kids there while they go to work. Plus, she's a mother herself, and her son is a soldier, and he's been called up to Gaza. So she'd rather be taking care of a business instead of staying at home and being depressed all the time, thinking about what might happen. Miraculously, an organization comes along, they hear about this problem, and they offer to help. They can provide the bomb shelters that the daycare needs, the children can come back, except these need to be very special bomb shelters according to Home Front Command. They have to be bigger, first of all, spacious enough for all the children and the staff. They have to be extra reinforced because these are bigger rockets flying farther, so the walls, the, the ceiling have to be thicker, more reinforced. They have to have special ventilation. They have to have electricity and Wi-Fi just in case the children have to stay there for prolonged periods of time, which means it's gonna take some time to get these made and delivered and installed. Even though bomb shelters are pretty popular these days, it's not like you can go buy one from the store and bring it and install it. They get made to order, especially for something like this, a bigger customized bomb shelter that this uh, daycare needs. The daycare finds some temporary solutions while they wait on these bomb shelters to be made. They divide the groups between different locations. They bring very small uh, groups of children at a time. And some of the parents find their own solutions as well. Finally, the bomb shelter is installed. Everything can go back to normal. 
normal with rockets flying. At least the children are in daycare and the parents can go back to work. And also these are, like I said, these are community daycares. There, there's houses, people's houses all around. And those houses, probably a lot of them don't have bomb shelters either. So in time of rocket attacks, they can actually run out of their house and into the shelter that's next to the kindergarten. So it helps the whole community. I guess there's never a dull moment in this country. Wars come and go, and every time they come back, there's more and more people affected. Obviously, in the north and south border, but now also in the center of the country. Even my city has been really quiet. When the war started, I could hear. I was woken up that morning by all the explosions, 6 a.m. They were in the distance, but they were loud enough to wake me up. I went out to the balcony trying to figure out what was going on. Nothing was in the news yet. And I'm like, I can't, it can't be fireworks because that's what it sounded like. And I was looking to the sky, everything was clear. I couldn't, they weren't close enough to see, but I could hear from all sides, I could hear the explosions in the air and some impacts in the hills nearby. Take away from all this, you know, you live through 11 months of a war and you feel that you've seen it all. You're not really surprised by the news unless something hits really close to home. So when people watch the news and hear about this war that's somewhere very far, place they've never been, I guess it's a lot easier to think that it won't happen wherever you are at. And I hope it doesn't happen. I hope it stops happening here and everywhere else there's wars. But just like explosions on Saturday morning, trouble comes without notice. And we all go through this. There's personal troubles, hardships, national crises, all kinds of stuff that can bring uncertainty and fear into our hearts. And I just pray that if you're going through that today, that as you listen to the story and as you hear about the people that are in the midst of this war, it gives you courage and motivation to keep going. There's a lot more stories to share. So if you come back tomorrow, I'll tell you another one.